So can you speak to the um, novel pathways and targets that are currently under investigation in follicular lymphoma? And what are the most important highlights um, to point out to patients and families? Yeah, absolutely. So you have to remember, number one, not all patients with follicular lymphoma uh, have to be treated. Uh, a fair number of patients um, uh, can be safely uh, observed initially uh, because, you know, the so when I was talking about the types of lymphoma, so the aggressive lymphomas, those ones are treatable, but curable, meaning you treat it, goes away, uh, good chance that it goes away and does not come back. Whereas follicular lymphoma, those are slow growing lymphomas. They may or may not cause problems. Um, the treatment though, they're very treatable. There's a lot of treatments available, but the thing is they're not curable, meaning that they go into remission they could stay in remission for years, but then eventually they would come back again. So you have to remember that because of that, um, you know, uh, large trials were done previously where patients who had no symptoms and not a lot of disease, uh, they were randomized. Uh, half would, you know, got treated, the other half were on a watch and wait. And the patients who, um, you know, survival was exactly the same in both groups. Um, there was not really any advantage to early treatment versus, you um, treatment as, you know, if there's a reason uh, in the future. And we typically have some, uh, you know, indications where we decide, okay, well, it's time to treat. And those basically have to do, you know, if the lymph nodes are big enough or they're close to an important structure and we don't want them to grow more and maybe press on an important structure, uh, or if they're causing, uh, you know, some kind of symptom or uh, they're causing anemia or low platelets. I mean, there has to be one, because, you know, there has to be one reason for why you're trying to treat that uh, patient because uh, you're basically trying to fix a problem. So if there's no problem initially, it doesn't make sense to treat it. Now, there are lots of available treatments. Um, it could be only immune therapy, something like rituximab or obinutuzumab. These are antibody treatments. Um, there's also combinations with, uh, with chemotherapies uh, like bendamustine, rituximab, uh, for 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 uh, if if we if we have um, you know relatively bulky disease, um, there is options as well that do not involve chemotherapy. So something like pills like lenalidomide combined with rituximab, those are also uh, you know options that can be used in, in follicular lymphoma. But over the last few years, there's been a lot of changes in follicular lymphoma and a lot of um, novel uh, targets and a lot of novel treatments available. So for example, a few years ago now, we've had CAR T-cell therapy approved. Uh, right now we have uh, two products approved, um, Axicel and um, uh, uh, Cambria. Uh, there's also uh, data that was presented with, with uh, Lysocell uh, in follicular lymphoma. So hopefully we, we might see an approval for that as well. Uh, so that's one class. Um, there's also bispecific antibodies, and it's very exciting times. We had the first bispecific antibody approved in the United States uh, in December of uh, 2022. That's mosinotuzumab. So what is a bite antibody? Uh, these basically are uh, advanced types of immune therapies where you give the patient an antibody that has two ends to it. One end sticks uh, to the cancer cell, the other end sticks to your immune cells. So it's basically hand-holding your own uh, uh, immune cells or your own T cells to go and get attached to the cancer cell and kill it. Uh, not chemotherapy. Uh, it, of course, you know, it can have some immunological side effects like uh, fevers or, um, you know, inflammation initially when, when, when it's done, typically within the first cycle or second cycle, um, but uh, something called cytokine release syndrome. Uh, rarely can cause neurological toxicity. That's also very uh, transient usually and, and very rare with bispecific antibodies. But um, the, uh, you know, those are, you know, two up and coming treatments. Right now, they are approved in patients who've had relapsed refractory disease, meaning they've had uh, two or more lines of pre previous therapies. Uh, but there, uh, we have them now in trials where we're looking at those agents in earlier lines uh, of therapy. Um, there's other agents as well. A few years ago, we had tezanidostat approved, which is a pill that targets a, uh, a, an enzyme in, in the cells called EZH2. Uh, and they basically, this pill uh, tries to uh, ask the cancer cell to differentiate 
uh, rather than you know uh, get stuck and and not die. So they differentiate and then they eventually die. Uh, so that's another um, uh, class of medicine. And you know we've now seen some data with uh, BTK inhibitors. There's been data presented from the Rosewood study with uh, zanabrutinib plus ovinutuzumab. Uh, it's not yet FDA approved, but the data looks uh, interesting and certainly uh, needs to be looked at uh, further.